cheers, you did well to get that. That's gas, how did you get this? I actually have traders in the group, well, maybe I have to try and find out your sources. Uh, this one hurts. Oh, I swear to God, I have to find out who was up behind all of this. Hello and welcome, I'm Colin Doherty for Sports Show. This is Screenshot and the man to my left is Mick Bohan, Dublin manager and 20 by 20 ambassador and a lot taller in real life. Um, it's like I knew you were told me, but Jesus, you're, you're making me look very bad here. There you go. <laughs> I look like Marty Morrissey, I'm on these boxes. <laughs> but um, you know what you're doing here? I do. So screenshots, I'm looking forward to seeing some of these pictures and <laughs> what unravels in front of me. So we'll have a look. I've done a lot of research here, but you're going to be impressed. All right, Excellent. So you pick any photo you want and then that's what we're going to talk about. we we'll start with the first one. Oh, nice picture. So... Lindsay, uh, Davy, player of the match in the All Ireland final in 2019. Must be immediately after the match. Uh, she was heroic in her display that day. So, very proud moment. I actually don't know. Somebody sent that picture to me not long after the match. Now I think it's a that's a really good moment. I heard a story that uh, Lindsay's actually responsible for you breaking your finger the first year you were in charge of Dublin? She did, look at the state of it. It's <laughs> not only breaking my finger, the tendon came off the bone. We were surfing in La Hinch and uh, I thought I was some kind of Hercules trying to grab her as she went by on the surfboard and literally the finger got into the wetsuit and snapped and I was trying to put her under my arm and get on with things as normal. But Jesus, did I not know what was coming. Six months in a sling. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I look at my finger, I think of Lindsay. So, um, so you yeah. can testify that like running into Lindsay Davy will make you have to oh, operation. I'll tell you God help any fellow that runs into Lindsay. <laughs> uh, yeah, she's some bit of stuff. But no, that was uh, that was uh, that was, when you look back, it's kind of, it's funny. Like, but at the time, I couldn't believe it. Like, uh, and obviously the pace that you're traveling on a on a, on a surfboard and trying to fight the elements as, uh, as well, but uh, that was a bad decision on my behalf. <laughs> well, great stuff, Mick. I'll let you pick the next one. The next one is, oh, this year's all Ireland final again. Would you believe it? Um, so, Nicole Owens and, and Siobhan Killeen. Uh, two girls who were terribly unlucky this year. Uh, Siobhan tore her hamstring off the bone and, um, and Nicole, did her ACL in the warm-up uh, in Parnell Park prior to the Monaghan game, uh, most unfortunate. And then obviously made a massive effort to try and get back to play and um, unfortunate to stand on someone's foot in the court game. And, uh, but two great warriors to the way they carried themselves and what they did uh, post-injury was, was huge. But um, that was actually before the All-Ireland final this year there was a girl that we had um, made contact with or made contact with us, Neve McMorrow, who uh, she was only 12 years of age or 13 years of age and she had an epileptic fit uh, this time last year and fell down the stairs in her grandmother's house and severed her spinal cord, uh, lost the power of her legs and her arms and um, she went, underwent surgery very shortly after that and her father set a goal for her that if she was to walk again that she'd lead us out in the all Ireland final and she did that. So the two girls were there getting ready to meet her. It was one of the things that we had organised in our group just that they met her as she came out onto the pitch because uh, we would have felt her achievement was every bit as big as ours on that day. Yeah, you give such a good way of keeping them all together as well. I heard Nicole had a really great speech in the changing room before the all She, uh, the week of it, yeah, she um, Gave a presentation to the group, I suppose, on what it meant to her uh, as guys been part of this setup. Uh, and very powerful, and, yeah. and uh, I suppose lovely to hear what it means to them both to represent Dublin and to have the strength of friendships that they've developed amongst themselves. Yeah. We continue well. Um, Jesus. Two thousand and three. Two thousand and three is right. My goodness, son. Nearly, they look like school children. Uh, so I'm not quite what sure. Uh, that day, uh, and I would certainly say it, it just shows you with experience. That was 16 years ago, obviously, and I, our, our 
my first All Ireland experience ever, and for many of them, theirs. Uh, and I would say to you, between my lack of experience and their lack of experience, uh, we lost that game, I think, by a last minute goal to Mayo. But I would certainly say to you that the lack of experience, uh, probably mostly on my behalf, uh, was a major factor that day. Yeah. You're picking good cards, Mick, keep going. Yeah. Ah, so. Better times. My two youngest, uh, that's Freya and Layla. My eldest daughter is Kate, she's not there at the moment. And then a niece of mine, that's uh, Ella. So uh, I'm not sure whether that's this year or... I think that's 2018. Yeah, it is, the tape. I know the colour of the tape. Yeah. There is, and there's yeah. no rainfall. So, and there's no rainfall, sunshine, believe it or not. Um, yeah, that was post All Ireland. They're lovely moments. I um, don't even have that picture myself, would you believe it? So, um, that's brilliant. <laughs> uh, but they're, they're lovely moments. I mean, yeah, you know, they're now told forever, but uh, that feeling uh, straight after the game, my two older ones are somewhere behind me in the crowd there. But those moments straight after the game to share it with the people that uh, I suppose miss out a lot of your time during the course of the year, they're special moments. Stuff. So continue on. Yeah. Well, my old pal Colin Collins. 2016, uh, you were with Claire. 2016, um, uh, I, I'm not sure what game that is, for, but, but sometimes, believe it or not, I'd know with the attire what I wear, what, <laughs> uh, what the game was. But th that. I think I think that was the Roscommon game that in in uh, and I think that was in um, in Salt Hill. Uh, that was a huge day for us uh, to make the final eight of the competition. For uh, we won Division Three that year. Um, I had a great time for Colum. One of my great learning experiences in football. Uh, I'd often tell people uh, we started training in Cratlow and. Better not say November because I'm not sure it was the ban in at that stage for the season, but uh, it was only 14 or 16 footballers at that stage. And then to go in and make the final eights and beat Kildare in the Division 3 final. Uh, huge learning experience for me with a great bunch of lads, so what thoroughly enjoyed that year. What were you thinking in Cratlow? Like, you've driven, <coughs> driven down from Dublin and there's like, what, 12, 14 people showing up to the first stage? And bear in mind, the season before, I had been involved with our lads, Dublin senior footballers, right? Uh, so to come from one to the other was night and day. Uh, but I suppose they're the challenges in sport and to see the way they bought into it and come round, they just simply don't have the same numbers. It's, uh, you know, the attitude of the players is, there's, you know, very little difference. The willingness to learn was exactly the same, but the reality is that they just didn't have the numbers. Most of their numbers were going to hurling. Uh, but very quickly they bought into it and uh, they saw success, uh, obviously relative to where they were at, but it was success. So, and I know myself even just how to approach but how, how I approached that had to be different and I had to change, I had to listen to people like Colm around me because I couldn't go at it the same way, the, you know, your standards either, you know, were just, you were dealing from a different ballpark or, or even the way how you got around players just had to be different and your rulings around things couldn't be the same because, yeah. you know, if you dismissed somebody or they may be key to you later on the season while you know you might have somebody to replace them in Dublin you might necessarily have that in Clare. So tell me what is going on here. You seem to have a kit bag on your back in the <laughs> boar's head. <laughs> uh, would you believe it? That's a habit of mine. Uh, <laughs> that I carry uh, I carry whatever I need when I go into town in a in a rucksack. <laughs> I continuously get slagged for this because uh, I could even I could be in a suit and I'd have a rucksack on my back and people are going what's going on here? <laughs> but uh, that I'm assuming is the day after the All Ireland final if we're in the Boris Head mm -hmm. and particularly in a Dublin tracksuit <laughs> and uh, I don't know what I would have needed throughout the course of the day <laughs> change of chocks and socks or whatever you wear you yeah. carry uh, in the in the rucksack but yeah the, I don't know if Hugh Horan is in there with me I can't I don't know if I'd have fitted him in. <laughs> But yeah, that's a strange picture. Yeah, I yeah. heard you're a good man for a sing song as well on the board stage. Yeah, I'm good at joining in. I am wouldn't be good at <laughs> leading. I'll tell you, it's a fair crew, number of air crew well able to sing. So, uh, a lively group to be around. Yeah. That's gas. How'd you get this? I actually have traders in the group. I don't think you have to realise this. <laughs> this is from the Blue Sisters documentary. And I thought this was interesting. Just how did you find that, like that whole experience of having a camera team in with you? 
It, it, that's, uh, we were talking about this earlier this morning, that's amazing really. Like when you, I wouldn't have obviously known this because I never had been involved with a camera crew following me or a team or anything before. And you know, we had quite a, a lot of debate, well the players had quite a lot of debate as to whether, you know, they should entertain it or not. And it was their decision, if they decided not to do it, it wouldn't have happened, simple lads. Uh, but they actually decided that, you know, maybe this is a good thing and ultimately women's sports don't get the same exposure as uh, men's sports. So this was an opportunity that maybe they should, you know, they could show women's football in a good light uh, as to how they approach it and everything else. But when you are presented with that challenge of, you know, cameras been in a dressing room or around training and whatever else, it seems quite daunting. Uh, Pat Comer was the cameraman in this situation, former Galway yeah. uh, goalkeeper and obviously he did another production with them and he was incredible. I would have told you that I didn't know he was there. Really? That is a fact. So it got to a stage whereby they were with us so often that we forgot about them. And the girls decision on it was that maybe it will actually help them focus, you know, that the fact that there's people going to be around who aren't in the group that it will make them focus on their tasks so it could enhance the way they go about their job or go about their business which I thought was a really interesting yeah. slant on the whole thing but I can I actually think I, I remember I think that's the scene where I'm talking to Noel yeah. uh, and, and uh, I would tell you that I was became unaware that there was a camera around really yeah 100% unaware that's amazing yeah okay. um, <laughs> so this, you're a Ballyboden man it turns out, not a Clintarf man. I have to try and find out your sources. <laughs> uh, this one hurts. Uh, <laughs> Louise told me recently that I uh, was a Ballyboden member and I nearly tripped up over it. So she'd <laughs> sign me in as a member in spite of the fact that I'm Clintarf man through and through. So the two youngest girls now are um, playing the football with Ballyboden and on a Saturday and Sunday mornings, now I'm seen around, so uh, that's gas. I didn't even know that picture was taken. Uh, so another cool picture, but yeah, that's one actually, but best to look, I actually told Bally Bowden that I couldn't be a member of two clubs in the city, and I was already a member of Clum Tarf, and then I go and see that. <laughs> They're claiming you, best of luck to Mick and Ellen. All that's missing is our Mick. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Um, the greatest, one of the greatest singers and cup teams, I'd say potentially of all time. You're talking Johnny Cooper, Philly McMahon, James McCarthy was he in it? Yeah. Paul Flynn, Pat Andrews, Brian Cullen, Shawnee Johnston. Well, anybody? that's going back, um, uh, that's a trip down memory lane on this one. Um, what a group of lads. That's Donny Shine, I'm just looking Donny there. Um, and actually, funny enough, uh, Darren Bishop, Darren Bishop was manager of the Louth ladies ma uh, team that won the Junior All Ireland this year. Isn't that amazing? Uh, there's David Kelly, the great oh, Sligo yeah. footballer, right? Um, I'm trying to think what else, who else we would have dealt with down through the years. There, obviously Brian Cullen on his shoulder. Uh, that was that had to be 2010. Um, Wow. That's 2010, yeah. This is the semi final against Minute. That's a minute, yeah. yeah. That's a minute. And beat UCC in the final, is that right? Um, beat UCC in the final. What a fantastic memory that was. Uh, Carl Craig from Roscommon as well. Um, would you believe it though, at that time, uh, you got to remember this is pre 211. So there was no Dublin success at this time. Mm. 2010. We won the under 21 All Ireland uh, final, and none of the young fellas had made it in at this stage. Like, I don't think Johnny Cooper there is there. I don't think James McCarr is Johnny there. Yeah, Johnny oh, there's Johnny. He's only a baby, of course, right? Um, so then maybe was James McCarthy and Dean Rock the following year? I'm trying to think at the how that. Although they were all on the same under 21 team, so they. They should have been. Yeah, I think James McCarthy was part of the squad. I don't know right, if he's okay. not in this picture. Maybe didn't uh, play the semi final. Not sure what, what the reason for, for that was. But yeah, that's actually sure. That was the start of his journey. Uh, so my year that year, 2010, I was terribly lucky to be involved with this group who won the Sigerson. 
and the young 21 All Ireland all the same year. So that was the start of a really special time. Yeah. Uh, you won the season three times. 10 and 12 and 15, three great, three great campaigns, yeah. And um, won the O'Byrne Cup with that group as well, which was, uh, I know a lot of people would dismiss that as whatever competition, but for the college team mm -hmm. to win the O'Byrne Cup uh, was huge. So, in fact, sorry, you know what I'm saying, we won it, we won it twice. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, that was an amazing feat uh, to, to do that. And again, you only realise it when you're within now. And when people look at that group now, when I look back in that group now and you think of the players you had, but they hadn't reached the, yeah. those uh, stages in their careers at that stage. When I looked at this, it reminded me of like the Ajax team, you know, where we would think, we'll look back in a few years and be like, I can't believe all these players played together. There you go. Do you know, yeah. before they became great well, sort of Oh, thing. what fam fabulous memories for them. But yeah. it, that was equally a stage in their, their career where they, I mean, it's one thing having good footballers. That Rob Henley. Yeah. Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> uh, there it goes. That, that says it all because, like, ultimately, the, you know, it's one thing having great players to get them to play together. And I, those players will tell you at that time they trained harder than they had ever trained before with anybody else, right? And there was no star studs at that stage. There was nobody talking about a star stud or mm. DCU team. Now you look back and you, you see it that way because so many of them went on to achieve great things. I think Paddy Andrews there in front, is it? I, I think Paddy was captain, captain actually, yeah, yeah. the There me. you go. <laughs> oh, wow. This, oh, I swear to God, I have to find out who was up behind all of this. So, Ian that's Young Party. Carney. That's Shane Carney. That's our stats man. Yeah. I'm trying to think, was that, must have been last year, was it? Do you know where that was? Do you know where that was taken? I can't, yeah. I can't reveal my Okay, you can't thing. reveal, yeah, okay. This reminds me of uh, Kieran Kilkenny's famous Let's Go Party. You've got it around your neck all the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's obviously New Year, so we've been away on two trips with the team. One to Cyprus and one to Andorra skiing. Um, so I'm trying to think, uh, I'm trying to look even at that. That looks like it was last year. That looks like... The, it was one of the bars and I can tell you that's in oh, Cyprus. Oh, is it in Cyprus? Okay, so <laughs> I love that is. This photo. I can't believe that didn't make a season of Sunday. I, I cannot believe that. Right? I, I can't believe I've only seen it. Hey. <laughs> I think this sums up Dublin, right? So you have the Dublin ladies manager at a Dublin men's game. I think this might have just been before he took over. But obviously you were Claire with Claire that year, and you're just still a dub. You're just, like you know you just you just love Dublin. Like I remember going to Crew Park this year before the final, meeting somebody who I think should be in the squad, and he's there with like a Dublin hat around you know, a headband around him, and he's blowing a horn and stuff. And I always think you would never get that in Derry. So that's my son Kevin, that's my brother uh, John, and a pal of his Jason, and two guys who figured we have a chance of getting into it. <laughs> Season of Sundays because Ray McManus was down here taking the picture, right? And what actually happened there was we have a couple of people in work who are from Mayo and they were driving me insane coming into this All Ireland, telling us about how this was it and they were going to end the curse. So that put the whole idea into my head. And there's a, a guy up. Um, past Dolphin Barnes, who, Dolphin Barnes who makes flags and I had, we've got our own flags done with, the, with our group with them. So I went in and I came up with this caption, dubs to make the curse worse. And I actually had only intended it for work. But then when we went to the match, I said to John, we could have a bit of crack with this here today. I think that's, obviously as a dub, I think that's a great flag. As a male person, I can't imagine you could do that. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that's funny. We're very good. Cheers, you did well to get that. And the very last one. And the final one. Oh, wow. I think this is 2010. You won the under 21 all Ireland. Uh, Ted Furman celebrating yeah. at the end of the game with Jimbo. Lesser seen Jim Gavin. Going there you absolutely go. Absolutely apeshit. You should show that to the press. People say Jim doesn't show any emotion. <laughs> that's the last time Jim showed emotion. <laughs> yeah. It was 2010. After winning the All Ireland, uh, that was a great day. If I don't know if you remember, Michael Murphy took a penalty that day. Mm -hmm. It was the last penalty taken from the 13 metre line, and to, a week later, that penalty was moved in two metres closer. Yeah. Michael hit that penalty that hit the uh, crossbar. It came back out past the 21. 
It came back out past the 21 and we attacked the opposite goal. And I can say to you nine out of 10 times, Michael would have put that ball in the back of the net. There you go. And that was his start of his journey with Jim McGuinness. Uh, and I would have said that was one of our great victories because they had a really, really, really strong under 21 team. From that group of players, an amazing group of lads came forward to play for Dublin. Obviously, Dean Rock, James McCarthy, Johnny Cooper. Um, I'm trying to think, Rory O'Carroll was on that team as well, who was, uh, played a sweeping role that day. Um, or he might have actually marked and we played a sweeper in front of him, would have been Johnny Cooper and Michael Murphy, who was just a colossus at that age uh, group. But that was a huge day. That was in Breffney Park, I think, in Cavan. Yeah. Um, but uh, fabulous memory and uh, certainly goes down as one of, the, one of the great wins that I've been involved in. And what was Jim like to work under? Jim, well, great, yeah. Um, I would say to you at that stage, Jim was going through his own learning period uh, as a manager. Uh, look what's happened, he's learnt, learnt to keep his emotions in check since then. <laughs> yeah. Did you, uh, did you but, learn a lot off him, do you find? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think I've learnt off everyone I've worked with. I've uh, been very lucky to work with a lot of good people. Uh, but highly organised, um, incessant in the way he goes after things, uh, methodical the way he prepares his group and his management team. Um, and in fairness to him, he doesn't waver like, you know, win or lose. Obviously, he hasn't been on the receiving end too often, mm. but uh, but he, he he keeps his emotions in check on the sideline and in the changing room most of the time. So uh, it was a great guy, and the city has been particularly lucky that he's been around for this group. And for you too, like for to have you around, can I just finally ask what would be your best achievement? If you had to pick one, I know you've won three with Dublin, three with DCU, you've won this. Like, what, what would you say that was the best one? I enjoyed it most. Uh, yeah, it, it, there's lots of, I suppose, when you're involved in lots of different things. Like I, I look back as a coach and I think, uh, you know, 2019, I don't feel under any pressure to anyone to have to try and prove myself as a coach. But that's only because I've been part of successful teams. Mm. So that confidence grows within you because you've had access to success, right? So, but I would also say to you, prior to being involved with successful teams, there's a yearning in you to be successful. So all of those things matter. Like 2010 was the first probably national title that I've been involved with with DCU. Then the under 21s went on to win the All Ireland. Then the you know the the Sigerson successes of 12 and 15. Then the senior success of 2013. But from a point of view of enjoyment, in 2017, having walked into the group with the girls and seeing the incredible effect that having lost three All Irelands has had on them, and how it had left major doubts in their, in their heads uh, and wounded them uh, to a large degree, to watch that emo uh, emotional high unfold in the last 10 minutes of that game was just incredible and you know while you never feel a game is won I could say it's probably the only All-Ireland final that I've actually been able to enjoy for the last six or seven minutes because we had them yeah. and obviously the goals changed the whole face of the game because the game was in the balance up until that period but the minute we had hit our second goal we had, there was no coming back from Mayo, and that's just part of the game. But to subsequently see the, that emotional release from the group was really, really special. Mm. So I suppose I'd have to put it up there with any, with any of them, but I mean, I look and think, I've been involved in my own clubs, fail or, or um, Dublin success with my own young fella, that was a special moment for, you know, as part of a, a family unit or whatever else, so they all add up uh, you know, I think of individual successes like in schools over the years where no one ever sees and whatever else, but you remember a smashing group of kids who came together and they all matter. Um, like we were saying earlier today that, you know, from the point of view of coaching, and I think this is a great line from that underage coaches should always be humble enough to prepare the rocket without wanting to go to the moon. And 
you know, whatever, late into my coaching career, I'm aware of the fact now that that's the view to go after, to try and prepare the individuals to be as good as they possibly can by really good coaching and giving them access and not chasing the prize, not necessarily, it doesn't have to be about a cup or a medal. And then all of a sudden, you achieve that mm. on the basis of the fact that you've gone, out, gone after a bigger, higher, holistic chase, yeah. you know, so all that matters. And so those moments, like, I mean, when you look towards a finale in a season, a cup or whatever else, I can tell you there was times down in La Hinch where we were surfing with a team or doing a team exercise. They were brilliant afternoons, moments of success with no cup or medal on view. So all of those part, and that's, I suppose, the message to young coaches starting off, you know, don't miss out on the journey. The journey is a real special prize. Yeah. And none of it will mean as much as Ballyboo winning the Leinster Championship, your home club, <laughs> Ballyboo. Mick, thanks very much. It's been a pleasure. I feel like it's been an episode of This Is Your Life. <laughs> very good. But it's been great. Okay. Thanks you. very much.